Okay, good evening. Good evening, teachers. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, teachers. Good evening, everybody. Yes, are you there? Are you ready for today? Yes, teachers, good evening. Today we are going to continue our session about speaking abilities, okay, speaking skills. So we are going to start, okay? Good evening, good evening, everybody. We are going to start today, okay, talking about this special skill, no? Speaking, speaking skill. We were talking about yesterday, okay? the different ways to evaluate, especially oral fluency, right? So today we are going to continue talking about this important skill, okay? So we are going to continue talking about speaking skill, yeah? But first of all, we are going to check, okay, something important that we Consider there, no? It was about this important thing, this important part that we found during our activity yesterday, no? It was about control and free activities. Yesterday, we were answered some uh, exercises, some different cases, yes? But we were talking about some control and free activities. So I think it's important, okay, to check the difference, right? Because most of the question in this kind of examination are related to this kind of activities, control and free activities. So what's the difference between them? Sometimes we can see the difference is very clear. Yes, so that's what we are going to describe today. When we talk about control activities, okay, it means that we focus on a specific language point. Yes? So, for example, we include structure, dialogues, pronunciation drills, okay? Or maybe vocabulary quizzes, okay? Most of the time, these activities help to improve accuracy and build a solid foundation in English. So don't forget that in this case, when we describe control activities, it's because we are talking about exercises that the teacher gives students, okay? In this case, the teacher is going to give some specific activities to do. Could be repetitions, okay? In order to practice a specific grammar structure or vocabulary, right? So in that case, we can say this is a control activity, okay? However, in our as a difference in a free activity, okay, we are going to work with the students. Yes, we are going to give an activity also. And yes, we are going to promote, okay, different topics similar to control activities. But in this case, we are going to work spontaneously, okay? This is not maybe, okay, giving a specific structures to practice, no. In this case, we are going to work on spontaneous. Could be conversations, in role plays, debates maybe, or maybe some oral presentation, for example, storytelling, okay? Descriptions, personal experiences, okay? And why is it important? Because these activities encourage creativity thinking. That's the difference between control and free activities. In free activities, we are going to see and we are going to develop, in this case, creativity thinking, okay? And allow students to express themselves freely. We are going to give a topic, yes, for example, famous people, for example, family members, for example, daily activities, but we are going to give also, okay, some free some free, uh, maybe descriptions, okay, or some free information that they can include in this activity, yes? So talking about free activities is because they are going to use what they know, 
okay? Maybe as a background or period knowledge they have, okay? So they are going to create the way they want, okay? However, in a control activity, no. Most of the time, we are going to only replace some vocabulary. We are going to repeat a conversation. Or we are going to change some specific words, right? But most of the time, they are going to respect, respect, okay, the grammar structure to practice, okay? So this is important to have clear, please, and also to difference because most of the questions in these examinations are related to this difference, no control and free activities. So now we are going to continue practicing some of these exercises. Okay, let me see. Oops, it go back. Okay, so here we have some exercises related to this speaking skill. Okay. We yesterday also practiced a little, so now it's better we continue in order to refresh our mind, right? So, for example, here it says, Catherine students. Catherine students have been dealing with a topic, personal belongings, okay? So, she wants them to develop their speaking skills through a communicative activity. Giving the teacher's goal which each of the following activities is appropriate. Don't forget that this is also, okay, work in a communicative activity. Okay, yesterday we also talked about it, no? When we say communicative activity, it's because we are going to check, we are going to see, we are going to consider interaction, right? So here we have three options, A, B, or C. A, the teacher tells one student to come to the front of the classroom and sit down facing his classmates. The teacher writes the name of a personal belonging on the board and tells the student to ask his classmate yes, no questions to try to guess the name of the object, the name of the object. His classmate must give short responses, not because they are short, uh, yes, no questions, so short responses. B. The teacher asks the students to bring a personal belonging. They sit in a group and one student shows his object to his peers and they ask them questions such as, how did you get the object? Why do you like it? When did you get it? Etc. The student answers his classmate questions. Once there are no more questions, they swap roles, okay? And finally, singing. The teacher places a list with the name of different kind of personal belongings on the walls outside the classroom. The students sit in pairs. One student runs outside, reads one word, and runs back to dictate the word to his partner. His partner writes the word, and then they swap roles. They stop when they've written all the words from the list. So, according to this purpose, okay, what do you consider is the most appropriate activity to apply? Okay, this is about personal belongings, okay? And we want to develop a speaking skill through a communicative activity. Come on, teachers, please. Participate, two minutes for your participation, please. Two minutes, come on. A, B, or C? Come on, please. Let's participate. Yeah? This is important. Okay, some teachers says B. Okay, Castro says A. When this is still at B. Okay. Come on, any other participation? Don't forget that in this case, we are talking about communicative activity. Yes. And a speaking skill. So what is the appropriate? A, to 
The teacher tells one student to come to the front of the classroom and sit down facing his classmates. So the teacher writes the name of the person and belonging and the student try to guess, asking just no questions. Or B, the teacher asks the students to bring a personal belonging. So they sit in groups and one student shows the object to his peers and they ask him questions such as, okay, how did you get it? Why do you like it? When did you get it? Okay, so they answer and they exchange roles, no? And finally, see the teacher pays a list from the names of different kind of personal belongings on the wall outside the classroom. So the students sit in pairs and one student runs outside, reads one word and runs back to dictate a word to his pair. And then his pair writes the word and then they swap words, no? They run outside again, dictate, and write, yes? So they finish when they dictate a complete vocabulary. Castro says A, and Jose, Sheila, B. Okay, any other participation? No more? Okay, two minutes pass. So, what's the answer? Here the answer is, let me check. Aha, correct, letter B. Now the question is, why? What? Is B. Why is B? Come on, class. Please tell me. Why is B? Why is B? Why do you consider B as the correct answer? What do you consider B is the most appropriate to develop a communicative activity? Activity, okay, in a speaking skill. Why? Come on, please. We said yesterday uh, we have to support our answers, arguments. Come on. Tell us, please. B is correct. Yes, but why? Why B is the most appropriate to develop a communicative activity? Come on, please, teachers, let's participate. That's the most important part. Think about it. Okay, I can see one. A argument there. It says, because in this case, the students interact, asking and answering some doublish questions. Yeah, okay, very good. So this is the answer, right? As we said before, communicative activities is not only speaking. No, a communicative activity is interacting, yes? In a speaking skill, the most important is interacting. So, in this case, in letter A, we have only yes, no question, right? Uh, maybe, no, is it yours? Do you have, and that's all, yes, no, yes, no, yes? In letter C, it's only a dictation, right? Board, eraser, maybe, pencil, book, right? However, in letter B, yes, we have more interactions because students are going to talk about this personal object. So they are going to get the opportunity to explain. Okay, good, very good. Let's continue, please. The next. Okay, today we are going to continue talking about this important part, okay? So we said before, talking about speaking and oral interaction is not only pronunciation and fluency. Another important thing, okay, that we have to consider, but sometimes we don't evaluate, 
is the nonverbal and paraverbal communication source. Okay? So, sometimes we said, no, miss, my student, okay, is good at English. Read correctly. Have a good pronunciation. Yes? But when they are in an interaction, ah, we have many problems, no? And we say sometimes, yes, miss, it's correct. So we are going to say he or she maybe gets no, the achievement. So we are going to write A. No? However, part of this evaluation is also nonverbal and paraverbal communication. And this is very important because, as we said before, okay, this is part of the communication. Okay, and for this kind of activities, sometimes only oral presentations are not enough. Yes, we need to get some strategies to develop this kind of specific characteristics in our students. Yes, so, so far we are going to get here some definitions. Yes, we need to understand clearly the definition, some then we can take some strategies to develop. Yes? So, and paraverbal communication. What is it? Nonverbal behavior has a substantial impact on teachers and learners' ability to communicate in, express emotion through a cognitively processed language. So, as you can see, only speaking, pronouncing, and having fluency is not enough. In order to get impact, okay, we are going to need these important things, nonverbal and paraverbal communication, okay? So that's what we need to develop also, is part of the process of the language. When we talk about nonverbal communication means the nonverbal communication component refers to the message we send through our body language, yes? Most of the time when students practice the conversations, they only stand up or sit down, have reading the notebook or reading the book, okay, and the turn. And we say, yes, correct, that's good, that was better, it was the best, yes? However, we are not considering this important a non-verbal communication, the body language, yes? Don't forget that part of the fluency is to speak naturally, right? So when we speak Spanish, we most of the time use, okay, this non-verbal communication, use our body language. So using this body language, we are going to confirm the information. We are going to maybe um, express security confident, okay? So depending on this body language, we are going to also give the correct message, yes, to the person. And also when we talk about paraverbal, okay, communication, it's the component or its component refers to how we say what we say. It means the tone, pacing, and bond of our voices, okay? This is another thing that we sometimes uh, don't consider, right? For example, the intonation, okay? When we are going to ask a question, when we are going to read a sentence, affirmative, negative, what are we going to emphasize, okay? So this is something important, please, to reinforce in our students, okay? They are also part of the communication, okay? Check in, please, in the, maybe in the criteria for the evaluation. Consider these important uh, things, no? The nonverbal and the paraverbal. In a student's language, we can say, no, the body language, yes? And we can say also the intonation, but we have to consider them, right? So if we are going to consider, they are also try to maybe uh, improve 
this specific communication. Yes? Okay, so now we are going to check clearly what do we include in each one. Yes? So, for example, here, talking about this nonverbal and paraverbal communication, here we are going to see, okay, some of these specific uh, criteria that we have to consider, no? The, fa the facial expressions, the gestures, the body language, and also the voice modulation, okay? As we said before, it's necessary to consider when we are going to develop this specific skill, no? Talking about facial expression, that's easy. This is engaging facial expression like smiles, yes? And not convey warmth and attentiveness. It means we need to check, okay, the listener's attention, right? Enhancing students' engagement and understanding. So imagine if we only want to say, okay, how are you? Are you okay? Good, that was a good day. So uh, it means that we have no reactions. Yes, no feelings. So it's different when we include some facial expressions. No, hello, how are you? Yeah, so maybe you smile if you say that everything is okay, right? Or maybe you make some gestures also, no? When we talk about gestures, says, such as pointing and using hand signals. Don't forget that when we talk, is not only about facial expressions, yes? We sometimes also use our hands, no? our hands to clarify the meaning, yes? For example, when we are going to give some information that is real, no? sometimes we use also some hands movements, yes? So we can emphasize the key points, yes? So yeah, the comprehension is going to be better for the listener, yes? He's going to get a better comprehension. So we are going to use also, for example, our hands, not to emphasize the information given. When we talk about body language, that's easy, no? For example, when we talk about it, it says no, maintain open the welcome posture, which conveys confidence and encourages active participation. And this is important to work, huh? Because sometimes, for example, when students have oral presentations, no, they are so afraid, so nervous, maybe. So they have also no the posture when they stand up. Okay, and instead of uh, looking at his classmates or her classmates, okay, they prefer looking at the, at the roof or maybe to the floor, yes, because they are so nervous. And this is part, no, this is part of the of the, the activity. Sometimes the students feel very, very uh, shy at this moment, or they are not so confident. Yes, so that's why they have this kind of body language. But depending how much uh, maybe they practice or the effort, yes, they make, so they are going to get or they are going to feel confident, right? So we can also help uh, talking about or maybe modeling, no, the body language they need to have in oral presentation, in conversations, yes. It includes also, for example, the eye contact, no? The eye contact, we need to look at the person's eye because this is part of the attention, okay? So here we can say, okay, to practice also this important uh, message, no? Because with a body language, we can also show the speaker or the listener interest, right? And finally, here we can see the voice modulation. Don't forget what we can see here is most of the time intonation. No, we have the raising intonation, we have the falling intonation, depending on the type of question, 
the type of sentence, no? if it's affirmative, if it's negative, what we have to emphasize, okay? So it says varied vocal tones, including changes in pitch, volume, and pace, okay? Enhance comprehension, maintain student interest, yes? So this is also part of fluency because in that case, we are going to speak naturally that is our objective, yes? Try to speak naturally, okay? In a conversation, in a presentation, in an interaction. So they are some of the non-verbal and paraverbal communication, okay, that we have to practice also in our students, okay? And don't forget that if we are going to ask students or give this kind of criteria, that's what we are going to check, yes? We are not going to see for example, in this case, if we have this criteria, we are not going to see, in this case for evaluation, uh, the pronunciation, not really. No, we have to set some specific criteria and also consider them. Yes, so students are going to be prepared because sometimes, uh, mo most of the time, no, when we have oral evaluation, oral presentation, okay, they say, ah, that's pronunciation, and that's all. No, so they concentrate on pronunciation, yes. But if we are going to explain in the criteria to consider this time, so pronunciation is important. But what the teacher is going to check the evaluation is the non verbal and para verbal communication, so they are going to be working on this kind of uh, communication. Yes, so this is depending on what we are going to evaluate, we are going to consider, and the activity we are going to also uh, give to the students, right? For example, most of the time, you know, try to place in different situations. Uh, maybe if we place a student in a restaurant, for example, you no, know, for example, when we say, you no, know, uh, asking for, or talking about meals, maybe, yes? So depending on the language function, we are going to get a specific context, okay? And we can consider also this part of evaluation, no? The fashion expressions, the gestures, body language, and voice modulation, okay? Well, this is not new for you, no? The only new is that sometimes we don't work in our classes, right? We don't consider it. Sometimes we say, no, but this is not important. But yes, yes. Some uh, study says, no, that communication mm -hmm. is 40% of all an information. And the rest, the 60% is body language non-verbal communication. This is another way to be understood, right? Okay, let's continue. Please here, let's practice over here, okay? So here we have another uh, case. It says, Marisa students are going to listen to the audio of a fable. She wants to assess her students' comprehension of the fable. Given the teacher's goal, which of the following activities is not appropriate? Check, this is not appropriate. In this case, we want to assess her student comprehension. We need to check the comprehension from an audio. A, the teacher Place the audio of the fable once and tell the students to listen to it. Then she writes some questions about it on the board and plays the audio again. This time, the students answer the questions. B, the teacher plays the audio of the fable a couple of times and the students listen to it carefully. Then she gives the students a word search Puzzle, huh? And she tells them to find the words they remember from the audio. C. 
The teacher plays the audio of the fable and tells the students to listen to it. Then she gives the students a fill in the blank worksheet with excerpt from the fable. She tells them to fill in the missing information while she plays the audio again. Okay? Don't forget that here the teacher wants to assess her student comprehension of the fable. Huh? The teacher wants to check the student's comprehension. Right? So which activity is not? Don't forget, not. Okay, let's participate, please. Jessica says B is not appropriate, it says. Julie says C. Castro says B. Sheila agrees, Cecilia agrees, and Wendy says A. Okay, don't forget that then you are going to support your answers, huh? Okay, any other participation? Come on. Okay, Luis is C. Okay, here we have. She is not appropriate. Don't forget that we are going to try to check the student's comprehension. Yes, we are also says, no? In an audio or part of the oral interaction is a listening skill, no? In an oral interaction, we, we talk about two specific skills, listening and speaking. In this case, is listening. So for the listening skill, which of them is not appropriate? Okay, here we have uh, Minchan, I guess, no? See? And here we have a, an email. Also says C. Okay. So, no more participation. Yes, no more participation. Don't forget that now the most important is that you try. No? If we made a mistake, no problem. Here we are going to learn together. Yes? Okay. No more. Let me see here. Okay, I think no more participation. So we are going to check the answer. Okay. So the answer is B. It means what, which of them is not appropriate to check the listening part, excuse me, the comprehension. The teacher plays the audio of a fable a couple of times and the student listen to it carefully. Then she gives the students a word search puzzle. She tells them to find the words they remember from the audio. Okay, please, teacher who says B. Why B is the correct answer? Why B is not appropriate to check the comprehension part? Okay, Castro says, B is not appropriate because word search puzzle is a, uh -huh. is not really activity to check comprehension, right? Okay, so this is not a good way to check comprehension, right? And that's correct. When you are going to remember, yes? Remember some words, is it comprehension or is it memory? What is it? Is it comprehension or is it memorizing? What is it? Okay, so Cecilia says, understanding, yeah, understanding is not measured by search pass. Correct. In order to assess this comprehension, the word search puzzle is not a good activity. Yes, why? Because this is only a memorizing yes, activity. We are going to check only you have a good or bad memory, but this is not comprehension. However, in A, it says, no, the teacher write the questions and then listen the audio and the students are going to answer. And in C, Something similar, no? Listen to the audio and the students are going to complete 
Yes. So this is also part of comprehension, right? But in this case, when we talk about only a word search pattern to remember, this is not a good way to check the comprehension, right? Okay, good, good way. Let's continue, please. John, now this is about John students. It says, John students are talking about likes and dislikes. At the beginning of an activity, he gives them the following instructions. Ask each other the question, what's your favorite hobby? And as well as other double H questions to get additional information. Before the students begin the task, he wants to check the students' comprehension if they really know what to do, no? Of his instruction. Which of the following strategies is more appropriate for his purpose? How can we check the students' oral comprehension, no? If they really understand, because this is important, huh? When we are going to give an activity, we need to be sure, be sure that they have clear instructions because if they, if we are not going to check the student's comprehension, it's a really problem, no? Because we are going to get whatever, but not what we need or what we ask, no? A, the teacher repeats instruction as many times as necessary until the students know what to do. The teacher chooses some students to come to the front of the class and help him model the activity. Or the teacher calls one volunteer to explain to his classmates in Spanish what instruction for the task is. Aha, uh -huh. I think the majority says B, no? Julie B, Cecilia B, Jessica B. Okay. Uh, Others participate, okay, Richard V, Sheila V, okay, Castro V, good. I think you have a clear list of V, okay. Any other participation? Mom, don't forget that this is important huh, to participate here during the practice, yes, because then we have no time for participation, right? Then we have only evaluation, that's all. Okay, it says also be mentioned, no? Okay. So let's check the answer. I think we have no more participation. So let's check the answer. Correct. B. The answer is B. Now please tell us. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, sorry. I go back. I go back. Okay, so what is the correct one here? Also B, as you says, no? Okay, here we have one C. Now tell us, please, support your answer. Why B? Why B is more appropriate, okay, to apply in this situation? Why B? Why do you say B? is the best way to check the student's comprehension to the teacher instruction. Why be? Come on, please. Okay, Castro says, because the teacher just help us model. Cecilia, because modeling is more important. Ah, good. Don't forget that that of the teacher's role in class now is modeling, model, yes? We says, oh, in the past, no, in a traditional way, the teacher give the instructions, okay, and the students obey, right? And the student says, oh, excuse me, the teacher says correct or incorrect. But now we know that teacher have different roles in class, yes? monitoring, facilitator, okay, and also model. This is one of the roles, okay, of the teachers, correct. So that's what it says, no? Teacher chooses some students to come to front of the class and help him model the activity, yes? 
In that way, we are going to be sure that the students get the idea. Okay, we can model with the students. We can model in class, okay? Only the teacher model, that could be a good idea, no? So, but Jessica says, they understand better, yes. Sometimes it takes a little of time, yes, but necessary, right? Because in that way, we are going to be sure that the activity is going to be well done, right? Well done for this uh, evaluation. Good job. Okay, so now we are going to continue. So today, now we are going to work in on another important, okay, characteristic in this oral interaction. That is interacting with different speakers effectively, okay? Sometimes students speak, yes, they speak. But is this communication effective? Is an effective communication? Yes or no? And we said, oh, but they um, they speak and that's all, that's good, it, it's okay. So they do it. No, we need to check that this communication has to be effective, okay? So that's what we are going to check now in order to get the concepts of them, no? Oops, excuse me, it goes back again. Okay, so now let's check first of all the concept, no? Because if we don't know the definition, okay, we have no idea about what to do, right? So Vernon in 2021 says, no? Effective speaking, effective speaking is speaking in such a way that the message being communicated is noticeably perceived. Then, if possible, act upon. Okay, check this definition. Huh? Effective speaking is, okay, speaking in such a way that the message being communicated is noticeably perceived. Okay, so for example, when we are going to give a sentence, give an idea, express, okay, an idea. But I notice that the listeners are confused, okay? They have no idea. So is it an effective communication? Is it an effective speaking? If the listener says, huh? what? The famous what? So is it an effective speaking? Come on, teachers, tell us. When we give an instruction, when we describe a situation, when we tell an idea, and a student's reaction is what? The student's reaction says, uh, hmm? so is it an effective communication? Yes or no, teachers? What do you say? No, yes. And we need to check that. Also, when students communicate, we need to check that, okay? So we need to try to help and give the best feedback, the necessary feedback, in order to see that we have, okay, the understanding or the complete message understood, okay? So it means the message being communicated is noticeably perceived, okay? If possible, act upon. So it means sometimes the message only by words is not really uh, perceived. So sometimes we need uh, the body language, yes? And part of this effective speaking is our body language correct? Yes, yours. Yes. In some cases, also the voice modulation, right? It's different to say yes, teacher. From yes, teacher, right? Is the same 
sentence or the same expression, but different voice modulation, different intonation. So if we say, yes, teacher, is it an affirmation? Yes, affirmative. But if we said, yes, teacher, it means that is a clear information or not? If we said, yes, teacher, is it clear or not clear? Correct, okay, so definitely also when we are going to work in effective speaking, we have to consider this part of nonverbal and paraverbal communication, okay? This is also part of the communication. Some students, it's difficult that they uh, work on this by themselves, right? We need to try to give some uh, could be activities, yes, that they can develop this kind of communication, right? Correct. It will more effectively communication. That's what we need. And that's why we said, no, this nonverbal and paraverbal is part of this effective speaking. Okay? Good. Let's continue. So now, Let's talk about some important characteristics we have to develop, consider, okay, in order to get this effective interaction, okay? We need to work in some effective interaction, so we have to consider also some specific activities to do and also characteristics to develop in our students, yes? For example, we need to work on active listening. Yes, what is active listening? Listen attending carefully to a student's contribution. Yes, show understanding through verbal and non-verbal non cues. And provide contrastic, contrastic feedback. Okay, so for example, if we are in a conversation, no? We need to check that the students look at each other, right? They pay attention to her or his peer, right? So also we are going to include verbal and non-verbal cues. Yes, as we say, maybe some facial expressions to start. Yes, and provide feedback, but the constructive feedback. Right? If we say immediately, no, that's bad, that's wrong, it is not good. So, oh my God, so the student is going to be uh, maybe shy. Or they say, no, teacher, I don't want to participate. Yes? So we need to work little by little, working in this specific communication, not the nonverbal communication. Yes, so what do we need to practice the active listening? Okay, turning or turn taking. What does it mean? Encourage students to participate, manage interactions effectively, and provide equal opportunities for all voices to be heard. No, so that's what we also need, not only one student speak or participate all the time, right? We all need to provide activities where students can participate, okay, but the complete in the group. For example, sometimes we said, no? Okay, conversations in pairs, yes? But in some groups, we have three students. So what can we do there? We need to adapt the conversation for three students, yes? Because we need that everybody participates, okay? We need to adapt in order to check or in order to provide equal opportunities for this participation, okay? So this is important also, yeah? Be sure that everybody participates. Finally, it says another important thing, in an effective interaction is the reinforcement, not the feedback. We need to 
to work, okay? Using only positive, positive reinforcement, no? Try to forget that words is not correct, is wrong, okay? Try not to use this kind of reinforcement or feedback, right? Don't forget that now we said, no, the most important feedback is give students a time to reflect and to discover the answer, yes? It not give the answer directly. No, no, this is not good feel. It's a kind of feel, but yes, but it's better if they discover and if they notice by themselves the answer, right? So we need to give the students reflection opportunities, okay? And most of the time, trying to use it, the positive reinforcement. Yes, acknowledge students' efforts and progress, praising them for their contributions and providing encouragement, no? Most of the time for the students, the prize is qualifications, right? Miss B, no, I prefer an A, right? So yes, we can maybe sometimes, depending on their effort, Yes, we can say, okay, you got it, so you do it. You can get an A for this activity. So they are going to feel motivated, yes? And they're going to try and next time also because they check, ah, the teacher is checking my effort. The teacher consider, okay? So that's what they need sometimes, no? The positive reinforcement in order to practice and feel motivated to practice, yes? This is another important thing that we cannot forget, right? So here we have, okay, some of these important things we need to work, okay, in our in our um, nonverbal and paraverbal and effective interaction, okay? Don't forget that when we talk about effective interaction, is because we need to understand the message, but also we need to be understood. No, so we, I need that the person, the listener get the idea, yes? So in this case, as we said, no, maybe the pronunciation, okay, is not time to correct at this part, no? The pronunciation. The most important is the message, to be understood and to be understood. Okay, pronunciation is important, but when we are working on an oral fluency, it's better to work this pronunciation, but then, yes, the feedback in the appropriate moment of the, uh, the activity, right? Okay, so now please, we are going to go and see, or we're going to check, I think, I think it go back. Yes, it go back, okay. The next activity. Aha. Uh -huh. Oops. And it has the answer. Okay. So now you are going to tell me why. Yeah. Marius and students have been talking about social networking. So, since the students got interest in that topic, okay, he wants to use the, that context to help them improve their oral skill. Yeah. This is the teacher purpose, improve their own skin. Through a communicative activity, given Mario's goal, which activity is least, in this case, is least, huh? is least appropriate to carry out. It means that it's not appropriate, yeah? We have A, B, or C. A, the teacher tells the students to make a list of either the pros or cons, consequences, no? the contrast of social networking and add some arguments such as examples or opinions to support their ideas. Then he asks the two students with different point of view in the pros and cons to get together. Finally, asks them to have a short discussion on the topic. Yes, it was a, A, activity A. B, the teacher writes the title, social networking. 
on the board. Then he asks as many students as possible to go to the board and write words related to that title. Finally, the teacher pulls up the students and tells them to take turns to speak about social networking for one minute huh? and using the words from the board, okay? And finally, the teacher writes the following question on the board. What social network sites do you see? What information do you have on those sites? And what are some good and bad points about social networking? Then he puts the students in groups and tells them to discuss their answer. Finally, the students share their finding with a class. Okay, the answer is B. Yeah, everybody can see, right? But now tell us, support the answer. Why B is least appropriate? Why B is not appropriate to develop or a skill in a communicative activity? Come on, please. Write in the box chat. Why? Why B is the answer. Why B is least appropriate. It's not appropriate to develop oral skill through a communicative activity. Come on. Please. Tell us. Support the answer, please. Why B? Okay. Castro says, because... They are talking just words on the board. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. In letter B says, no, the teacher writes the title social network. Then he asks as many students as possible to go to the board and write related to that title. Yes. Finally, the teacher puts up the students and takes them to take turns to speak about social network networking for one minute using the words from the book. Okay, all right. No, as you can see, this is not totally an oral activity, an oral skill development, right? Why? Because they are writing. Part of the activity is writing, right? And only they have one minute for oral communicative or for oral skill. So this is no, okay, a good way to develop this oral skill in one minute. Imagine, in one minute to develop oral skill. No, that's impossible. However, in letter A, it says, no, students make a list. Yes, make a list. And then they add some arguments, yes, opinions about their position, yes. And he has to a student with different point of view. One says positive and the other one says negative. So they are going to discuss, yes, expressing ideas, correct, yes. And you see, it says, no, teacher writes the following questions. They are three questions, yes? Oh, excuse me, four questions. And they are going to discuss about these questions, right? So that's why we say A and C are good options, yes? Is more appropriate, right? But B is least appropriate because students have not too much oral activity. Yes, only one minute. Okay, I think we are, excuse me, we are on time. We are going to get 10 minutes for the break. Okay, 10 minutes for the break and then we go back and continue. Okay, 10 minutes for the break, please. In 10 minutes, we go back. Okay, teachers, let's go back, teachers. And go ahead to the activities today. Yes, let's go back. Let's go back. We're going to continue. Well, let's go ahead to the rest of the information for today. Okay. Yes. Are you there now? Are you ready? Yes, teachers. Too much time of the or oh, short time for the. Coffee, yeah, yes, okay, Castro. So please go ahead. Okay, so we have already practiced 
right? Because this is very important to practice about this one, no? Okay, please. It says, now let's check. I excuse me. Yes, B, no? Excuse me. Okay. Here we have, during her last class, oh, again, the answer. Come on, I think everyone, everything has the answer. So I guess what happened to the, to the effects today doesn't work, I guess. Okay. During her last classes, Lucrezia has noticed that her students have difficulties, okay? Let me see, I can read here, to pronounce some words. She wants her students to improve their pronunciation of those words in a meaningful way. Don't forget, this is about pronunciation problem, yes? Given Lucrezia's purpose, which of the following strategies is it more appropriate to adopt? Okay, A, B, or C. C is the answer. Okay, but let's check why. This is the most important. The teacher in A, in A says, brings bingo cards with the words she wants the students to practice. She gives a bingo card to each student and reads the words aloud for the students to mark, to mark it down, okay? And in their cards, fine. She asks the students to pronounce the words as they have heard them some minutes ago. B, the teacher writes on the board the words she wants the students to practice and reads them, and reads them while trying to emphasize their correct pronunciation. After that, she asks the students to repeat each word after her. Finally, she points the words randomly and all the students pronounce them at the same time. In C, says the teacher writes three tongue twisters on the board. She reads them aloud and has the students repeat them after her. Then she puts the students in pairs and asks them to practice those tongue twisters. Finally, they make their own tongue twister using some of the words they find more difficult to pronounce and present it to the class. When we are going to work in pronunciation, okay, we have to try to work here in a most funny way, yes? Because sometimes when we are going to include some traditional or correct repetition, it works, yes, but if they get accuracy, better. Better for the learner, yes? So, C, why C is more appropriate? Why C? Aha, uh -huh. the students don't improve with twisters, yes? Because it just re and repeat. Even is me okay, it's not a good activity, yes? Are you sure? In twisters, okay, talking about pronunciation is not a good idea. They have no so much activity in pronunciation, huh? Be careful. In this case, the idea is to practice improve pronunciation. It's not oral fluency, it means that they don't need to talk too much. No. We need to practice only pronunciation. Most of the time in classes for pronunciation exercise, we work on repetitions, right? Correct repetitions. For example, doctor, doctor, teacher, teacher, lawyer, lawyer, right? So in this case, if we want to work and improve a student's pronunciation, in a meaningful way, okay, what is the best one? In this case, it says using the tongue twisters, okay? Why? Because don't forget when we talk about the tongue twisters, okay, for students, most of the time, okay, it's funny, it's relaxing, right? So they can practice easily, right? And for example, a, we have a bingo card. Yes, okay. So we are going to get the bingo card and each student is going to read. Now, but is it funny? 
Ah, to improve. Okay, Castle. Now it's better understood. Okay. So in this case, when we talk about bingo, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, could be. Okay, so students read. Yeah. But if we want to check in the more appropriate, in a more meaningful way, is working in this case, yes, in tone twister because they are going to read complete sentences. No, so we are going to work in that case pronunciation, but with fluency, also fluency, right? But in a bingo, no, no, it's only a vocabulary, but individually, no work. By word. Also in letter B, it says write in the word, the words you want the students to practice and read it. No, as we said before, the core and repetition, no? Teacher, teacher, doctor, doctor. So we need to try to get better exercises if we want to work meaning. Yes, we want to use meaningful way to practice. Okay? Well, I'm going to check that. We have no more answers here because I need that you practice. Let me see. Please, some seconds, okay? I'm going to check that we have no more answers given here, yeah? Let me see. Well, give me a second, please. I'm going to see over here. I can, I'm going to check, please, some seconds. Okay, I have already checked, so I think now we are going to have to try, no, not get the answer easily, no, we are going to try, yeah? Okay, now we are going to continue here working on another important thing when we talk about oral interaction, and this is the language use, okay? When we are going to use also okay, or evaluate this oral interaction, we are going to consider some important, okay, here, characteristics in our evaluation, no? For example, here we have the language use, and this depends, for example, on the content for the evaluation for and also context, yes? So depending on that, also we are going to get or we are going to set our criteria for the evaluation, right? So let's continue over here. Let me see. Oops, I have no. Uh -huh. Where is it? I think you cannot looking at the teacher. I think it's important to look at the teacher also. Okay, let's continue. For example, here, no. When we talk about the language content, what does it mean that we are going to use this language, okay, but with relevant topics, okay? We need to choose relevant topics that pick students' interest, yes? That get the students' interest, that the students' interest and connect to their life, fostering meaningful conversations, yes? We said before, no, when we talk about topic, we need to be careful. We need to select the appropriate and the correct topic, okay? Because depending on the topic, we are going to get the student's interest, right? And if we catch the student's interest, that catch the student's attention, we are going to get a better oral interaction, right? They are going to participate. They are going to engage to the topic, yes? 
They are going to have some fluent ideas. No, we're going to get ideas in a fluent. Okay. So, for example, we are going to choose maybe family members, food, hobbies, job, also TV or music. Yes. Sometimes uh, I think, no, uh, the week ago, I guess, okay, last week. I said, no, some of the most famous topic to talk in class was about soccer. Yes, soccer team. Most of the students want to talk about, give a scores, yes, give opinions and also expectations about our Peruvian soccer team. Yes, and they want to participate. Yes, it was very meaningful for them. So that's what we need to check. When we are going to consider the language content, okay, to include in our oral interaction, we have to consider relevant, but not relevant for the teacher, right? Relevant for students. So it means that we have to investigate, we have to check the student's interest. So we are going to give some possible ideas, yes, and get or try to get a students' attention, right? This is the most important here. We catch a students' attention, excellent participation for this activity, right? So this is very important, please. Consider in your activities the content. We need to choose relevant topics for students, not for the teacher, right? Okay, continue. Another important, a characteristic to consider the language form. Yes, when we talk about also the language form in an evaluation, okay, it's that we are going to focus on grammatical accuracy, appropriate vocabulary, pronunciation. Yes, so we need to provide clear examples and guided practice. Okay, so. In this case, when we are going to evaluate the language form, we need to provide students clear examples, okay, clear practice, so students are going to pay attention in grammar. Yes, uh, today I'm going to check, for example, the uses of um, Past tense. So the language function is describing last vacation. So it means in this case, we are going to evaluate, yes, the language form. Yes, because I'm going to focus on the grammar, accuracy. What does it mean? Use the correct grammar and speak correctly. Yes, so it's important also to speak inform students about this criteria for the evaluation, okay? So when you are going to check this specific um, form in students, okay, it's because we are preparing a language form evaluation, yeah? Okay, let's continue. And the other one was the context. This is another important thing to consider. Okay, as we said before, when we talk about oral interaction, it's because we need to give students the opportunity to expose to that language, to be exposed to that language. Yes, it means try to listen to native speakers, videos, in audios, okay? So we need to check that they listen the native speaker's pronunciation, right? So in our context, we are going to create authentic scenarios for oral communication, yeah? Mirroring real life situations and promoting practical language skills, yes? Most of the time, students get better ideas, okay? When they feel comfortable, okay? And they feel comfortable talking about uh, specific activities or specific topics that they know. So we have to place that specific context for them, right? For example, 
in the mirror, in front of friends and family, or maybe online events, school activities, work activities, at the library, okay? So depend, uh, or maybe at the stadium, no? Depending what we can check a student's interest, we are going to place the students in a real situation, okay? That they like, that they prefer. And we are going to give a students to use their language, yes? So depending on the context, in the context we set, students are going to feel also comfortable, yes? And they are going to use the appropriate vocabulary, okay, for this specific context, no? Because it's different talking about, yes, in a school with friends, okay? And for example, it's different if we say, okay, now we are, for example, in a restaurant, no? So please, you are going to, uh, maybe that you're going to get a, a waitress role, no? Or a waiter role and you're a customer. So they are going to get in that context, they are going to use a specific grammar structure and also vocabulary, yes? Because they have to place in this context that they know, they know, know what to say, what to do, okay? So this is another important thing that we have to consider. When we talk about the places to develop the activity, it's because we are working on the language context, okay? Well, now, please. So this is the language use. No, we can use the language in different content, in different context, okay, and form, right? Depending what we are going to uh, set for our students, we are going to evaluate also, right? Okay, let's continue. Aha. Uh -huh. And finally, we are going to check the most important, yes, the nowadays important to develop, the critical thinking development. Yesterday, we talked about this specific uh, process, no, the critical thinking. And we said this process requires a lot of capacities to develop, right? Analysis, we said, okay, making decisions, Yes, so this is an also uh, something we have to develop in our students, but with some specific activities also, right? Because we need the students to develop this uh, critical thinking in order to make decisions, yes? We said yesterday, so in that way, they are going to get their own concepts, their own uh, position, and they are going to get also arguments, yes? Okay, so talking about the critical development, let's see. Uh, one more exercise, it says, ah, hello, hello, miss, I can see you. Okay, let's continue. The teacher wants her fourth graders to develop their oral skill through the topic, life experiences. This is the topic. She has thought of three strategies to achieve her purpose. Which of the following strategies she has thought of is more meaningful, check out, meaningful for her students? Which of them is more meaningful? A, the teacher has the students answer a questionnaire about life experiences. She asks them to exchange it with a classmate and read a classmate's answer for some minutes. Then the teacher calls some volunteers to report some of their classmate answers aloud. B, the teacher tells the students to use the questions, have you ever, to interview their classmates. She tells the students to ask follow-up questions to get details about their peers' experiences. Finally, the teacher calls on volunteers to report their finding to the class. Or the last strategy, C, the teacher puts the students in groups 
and give them biographic information about famous singers. She tells students to read information and decide which singer has had the most interest experience, interesting experiences. Finally, students report the singer experiences to the class. Okay, come on teachers. In this case, we are going to develop oral skills, yes? So, in this case says, which strategy is going to develop better this oral skill, but in a meaningful way? Huh? It says you lazy. B, Castro, B. Okay, don't forget when we talk about meaningful, it's because they are going to Try to share experiences, real life situations. Yes. Okay. Uh, Luis agrees. No. B says also Luis. Come on, please. The rest. What do you say? Okay. Milano says B also. I think everybody's sure. B is the answer. It means the teacher tells the students to use the question. Have you ever to interview their classmate? She tells the students to ask follow-up questions to get details about their peers' experiences. Finally, the teacher calls some volunteers to report their finding to the class. Okay, Shayla agrees, Milagros agrees, B, B. Cecilia agrees, B. And Jessica agrees, good. Okay, I think the majority Okay, the majority says B, okay. Yes, no more participation, are you sure? Don't forget that this is important, please. Huh? This is also part, okay, of your training, no? To participate. This is really important, please, okay? Yes, no more, are you sure? Don't forget that then you are going to support your answer, huh? Ah, so one teacher says, see, the teacher puts the students in group and give them biographic information about famous singers. She tells the students to read information and they say which singer has had the most interesting experiences. Finally, the students report the singer experiences to the class. Okay, and Richard agrees. Uh, the teacher no? says C also. Okay, so don't forget that in this case, this is the topic life experiences, but we are going to reinforce oral skill through a meaningful strategy. So, which of them is the meaningful strategy to work on oral skills? Come on. Any other answer? I think no more. Okay, let's check. The answer is B, correct, B. Now the question is why? Please support your answer. Why B is the most, or in this case, more meaningful, okay, strategy? Why B? Why A and C are not meaningful? Why B is more meaningful? Okay, to practice. Come on, please, teachers, support your answer. Why B is more meaningful to practice oral skills. Come on, please, huh? this is part of your training also. You have to support your idea. Okay, Castro says, because if you ask, have you ever, you will answer, about your real life. Uh -huh. Yeah, in this case, the person is going to contrast or is going to compare, not think about personal experiences. Okay, any other answer over there? Any other answer? And it's true. It's true, when we talk about meaningful activities, yeah, this is a meaningful interview. Okay, when we talk about meaningful activity, it's because we are going to 
Look for your real life, your personal information. Yes, you have to think in an activity that you have already uh, maybe passed or check or maybe have an experience, yes, in this specific topic. So in letter A, for example, says, no, the students answer a questionnaire, okay, about life experiences, and they exchange it with a classmate and read classmate answers, yes? Then teacher calls on volunteers to report. In this case, the students are going to, yes, talk about real life experiences, yes? But in this case, no really talking, yes? Is no a real oral uh, development because they are going to answer the questionnaire and they are only read, read the answers, yes? And that's all. And maybe one or two are going to read the answers aloud, and that's all. And only reading an answer, yes, it is, no, it is not, or I have visited Cusco, que is not a really oral skill development. Yes, it's only a short participation. In letter C, the teacher says, put the students in groups and give them biographic information about famous singers, okay? And then the students read and decide which singer has had the most interesting experience. Correct. And this is very communicative, maybe, no? Because they are going to choose, decide, they are going to share information. But in this case, is it about personal experience or a third person experience? Talking about a third person experience, is it meaningful? Is it meaningful talking about a third person experience? A different person experience, is it meaningful, teachers? Yes or no? No. Great. Don't forget, when we check the word meaningful, is because we need to contrast, okay, the information with your real life your personal experience, something about your personal experience, yes? And let her be as your, the teacher says, no? Have you ever, so he, this person is going to describe personal experience. Correct, good teachers. Next, next activity. Aha, uh -huh. it says, Elsa is going to evaluate her fifth Raiders, okay? A speaking skills through a final debate. Check, huh? it's a debate on the topic a school uniforms. In this context, because this is a context in the school, okay? He has, she has planned the following sequence. The students work in groups of three. One student in favor of the school uniforms, one against, it means no, no school uniforms, and one judge to evaluate the debater's participation, no? So one only watch, okay? See the debate and then is going to judge, give an opinion, no? Second activity, the teacher writes some useful expressions to be used during the debate, such as, could you say that again, please? You may have a point there. Let me put it in another way, etc. After that, she gives the debaters some time to prepare their arguments individually. Okay? After that, next, the students take turns expressing their ideas, while the judge pays attention to their performance. Based on the various arguments, the judge asks one question to each debate, okay? After that, the debates are given some minutes to prepare their answers to the question. 
Then the debaters give their answers and the judge assigns a score to each debater based on his or her overall performance. Finally, the teacher asks the judge for the scores given. Based on the sequence presented, because this is a debate, which of the following has Speaking soft skill is not an objective of Elsa's lesson, which is not an objective because remember, what is uh, Elsa's um, objective? Working on evaluate speaking skills, right? So, according to these activities, this sequence, which is not an objective of Elsa lesson. A, communicative ideas fluently. B, using, let me see, using non-verbal and paraverbal sources or using language according to content, form and context. Ha, huh. Jules says C. Castro B, Sheila B, Luis B, Richard B. Aha, uh -huh. Henry also B, Cecilia B, Teofilo also B. Okay. And Jessica and Julie say C. Okay, so we have B or C. Yeah. Okay. Continue, please. Damaris says C. The email says C. Okay, any other participation? Don't forget, please, your participation is really, really important. Now it's time to try, no? And if we try, we are going to check if we are in the right way or we need to practice more, right? So please, let's participate. It's a C. Here we have a sequence. And in the sequence, we develop different activities, no? So what, according to this one, which sub-skills is not an objective? Communicating ideas fluently, using non-verbal and parallel sources, and using language according to content, form, and context. Which of them is not an objective of Elsa's lesson according to this sequence. We describe all of them, huh? we describe all of them. Okay, I think no more answers, so let's check. So the answer is B. Okay, using non-verbal and paraverbal sources is not an objective of Elsa lesson according to this sequence. Yes? So now support your answer. Why? Why B, non-verbal paraverbal sources, is not an objective? How do you notice this? How do you notice that this is not an objective? Please. Can you tell us? Come on, please. Let's write in the chat, on the box chat. Come on. Why not? using number and parallel sources, okay? Why this one is not an objective of Elsa Les? Why not? How do you notice? Please don't forget your participation, analysis and arguments are important. Okay, here we have an answer. In the text, or it means in the sequence, okay, don't, doesn't mention any of them. Okay, good. During the theory uh, explanation, we said, no, when we are going to evaluate non-verbal, paraverbal sources, we need to include some specific activities or criteria, okay, uh, so students can develop some body language, gestures, and also we said the voice modulation, right? So all of them in this sequence 
are not described, are not pay attention, right? For example, here, the facial, aha, uh -huh, the facial expressions, correct. They are not mentioned, they are not considered. When it says the students work in group of three, aha, uh -huh, we can see here the topic, right? Uh, what do you mean, Elizabeth? I don't know, do you, do you refer to my tone of voice? Yes? You cannot listen to me? Yes, that's what you mean? Yes or no? I suppose yes, no? Okay, so the teacher is going to speak louder. Okay? Okay, okay, thank you, thank you, okay. Uh, Elizabeth, you cannot see, you cannot see what, Elizabeth? You cannot see the slides? Ah, you cannot see letter C? Uh -huh, here is letter C. You cannot see, I don't know why. Elisa said, cannot see letter C, the option C. What about the rest of the teachers? Can you see the complete slides? Yes or no? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, sorry, Elizabeth. Maybe you have a problem with the, with the internet sometimes. Yes. Okay, sorry. But don't forget, I'm going to send you this material. So you are going to read again. You are going to contrast your answers. No problem, okay? So you are going to get in your, maybe, in your drive, okay? No problem. I'm going to get the material for you, okay? So don't forget. Thank you. Don't forget, huh? in this case, we need to specify this kind of activities, not non-verbal and paraverbal. So immediately we are going to think, ah, it's referring to gestures, facial expressions, yes? So in this case, we have... When we talk about the school uniforms, ah, this is about a topic selection, right? The teacher writes some useful expressions, yes? So the debaters are going to prepare their arguments. Ah, they are working on maybe the critical thinking, no? Next, the students take turns expressing ideas. It means oral fluency, no? They are going to express freely the arguments, right? And then the debaters are going to get some minutes to prepare answers again. So they are going to support their arguments. But in this case, ah, it also says, no? The judge is going to assign a score based on his or her overall performance. When we talk about performance, yes, sometimes part of the performance is, okay, Yes, just body language, yes? But in this case, it's a little, no? We have not so much or a specific activity, in this case, this sequence, okay, to develop or to evaluate non-verbal or paraverbal sources, yes? Don't forget, in paraverbal, we talk about the volume, no? The tone or the voice modulation. And here we have... We don't have anything about it. Yes? Okay, good. Come on. Let's continue. Next, it says 77. In 77, we have the next one. Given the teacher's goal, okay, of evaluating a speaking skill, continue talking about speaking skill, which of the following criticism of this sequence is appropriate? Come on, please. Which is the following criticism for of this sequence, okay, is appropriate. Okay, from the sequence before, huh? from the sequence before. A, the students or a performance shouldn't have been evaluated by their peers because evaluation need pretty accurate judgment. This evaluation should have been done by the teacher. Or B, the setting for this oral sequence shouldn't have been a debate because debates are complex and require high command of the language. The setting of assessment should be simple and easy. Okay. Finally, C. The debaters shouldn't have been assessed. Wait a second here. I can. Huh. 
shouldn't be should have been assessed only on the overall performance. The judges should have been provided with an assessment tool that helps them evaluate different aspects of the debater's performance. Okay, come on. If we have the sequence before, no? Now we are going to evaluate speaking skills. So which of them, A, B, or C, okay? Which of them, this criticism of this sequence is appropriate? Huh, the majority says C, 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 yeah, huh? Okay, the majority says the problem is C. Huh? We need to get a better specific, yes, okay? Uh, work in C, it means the debater shouldn't have been assessed only on their overall performance. The judges should have been provided with an assessment tool, could be a rubric or could be a, another specific tool, okay, that helps them evaluate different aspects of the debater's performance, okay. So don't forget when we talk about performance, yes, no, we need to check different aspects. Uh, as we said, no, non-verbal, paraverbal, okay? So the majority says C. Please, let's check the answer. Is it C? Correct, right? Correct. When we talk about a debate, the topic could be Okay, the, depending on the student's interest, yes? And for example, in B, no, uh, it says, no, the setting of this oral sequence shouldn't have been a debate because debates are complex. So in order to prepare a debate, it's not necessary because we have a real problem or a difficult situation to analyze, no politics, not necessary. We are going to use some specific Topics, yes, what we can see as students sometimes can uh, be agree or disagree, yes. Here, the most important thing is the interaction and fluency to develop, right? It says uh, the setting for assessment should have been simple, no? Should be simple and easy. Yes, that's right. And when we talk about a school uniform, it's not a complex. Yes, it's not so much complex. In A, a student's oral performance should have been evaluated by their peer. Yes, their peers can also evaluate. That's true. No, but they need, okay, some specific tools. No, for example, like we said before, a rubric, maybe. Yes, so they can check what specifically aspects we have to consider in this performance, right? And we said before, no, most of these aspects are the communication, but not only verbal, also non-verbal and paraverbal. Yes, and we can give this specific tool to the students so they are going to also be prepared for these evaluations. Yes. Okay, good. Next, the next one is ha, the following. Here it is, no? Brenda's fourth graders, ha, let me see, is here, yeah. Have been talking about health problems. Yeah, this is the topic. During the past few sessions, Given the context, she wants them to practice giving advice and suggestions. They are the language folks. folks. Uh, she has planned the following sequence. Okay, here we have another sequence. First, the teacher pairs up the students and give each one a role. Student A is a doctor, student B is a patient. Student B has to describe the symptoms of a health problem. He's Experiencing such as stomach, a headache, a cough, etc. And student A has to give, have to give him advice to get better. 
Okay? Then, the student work for some minutes and then the teacher calls on volunteers to present the conversation. Finally, the students reflect on the language related to advice and suggestion used during the activity. And the teacher elicits other situations in which they can use that language. Okay, according to this sequence, which approach to teaching grammar is Brenda trying to promote? Inductive approach, deductive approach, or functional approach? What is it? Inductive, deductive, or functional approach? They are some of the different approaches that we need to check and have clear also, yes? because they are also part of this kind of examinations, okay? So we need to have to difference which of them, or which activity is inductive, deductive, or functional approach. So in this case, according to your experience, what do you think? Which approach to teach grammar is Brenda trying to promote, okay? Don't forget that in this case, she works in class health problem. This was a topic. But now she wants to practice giving advice and suggestions. Don't forget that this is the function. So she planned this sequence to teach this language function. First, get in pairs. A, the patient, be a doctor. So describe the symptoms. Then the teacher as for volunteers to act out the conversation. Yes, because this is a conversation, okay? And finally, the students reflect on the language related to advice. Come on, please, ideas, what do you think? I think Jessica says, see, functional approach. Come on, teachers, what about the rest? What about the rest? C, Milagros, Richard B, Henry C. Okay. What about the rest? It says C, C, functional approach, B, letter C, C, okay. So some, some teachers says B, some teachers says C. In that no, no, inductive, difficult, no? So for next, okay, for next week, we are going to work on that. Yeah, we are going to remember these different approaches. So we are going to get that clear information about it, no, in order to difference, yeah? So, okay, the answer here is, yes, as you said, let or see. Functional approach. Now the question is why? No, why is not inductive, is not deductive. Why is functional approach? Why? Why we said that this is work, this grammar structure is working a functional approach. Why? Come on, teachers, support your answers. Many of them say C, so support your answers. Why do you notice? How do you realize that this is a functional approach? Uh, in this case, in this activity, come on, please. Come on, please. What do you say? Please support your support your answer, please. So, in order to get a clear, a clear idea, okay, for next week we are going to talk about or talk a little about it, okay? Sheila says, because this is about real life, language function, okay. So as you can say, that's correct, no? Because in this case, the students are learning how to give an advice and suggestions, but not through an explanation, yes? In this case also, is not because we watch a video and we identify and discover. No, in this case, we say this is a functional approach because they are using the language. They are using the language and then they notice, yes? 
they use the language so they learn the grammar. No, because the teacher explained. No, they don't say, for example, okay, this is model should for suggestion. This is model must for obligation. No, in this case, they are learning how to give in advice and suggestions by when they are using them in a conversation, in a real situation. Yes? Okay, teacher, next week we are going to talk about and give some information also about these different approaches in order to have a clear difference, okay? So I think that's all for today, teachers. Have a nice weekend. Have a nice uh, night today, yes? So we are going to continue working next week, okay? Thank you. God bless you also for everybody, okay? Bye-bye. <clears throat> see you next, next week. Yeah, see you. Bye-bye.